Wait a minute. That doesn't look right. There we go. Much better. It's finally done. My latest arcade cabinet project. Super happy with the way it turned out. It took me honestly maybe three to four months from idea in my head to actual physical product that I can play with. And I'm super happy with it. I, I really like going through the process of just having this idea in my head, getting it out on paper, getting it out on the computer, getting it out in the physical, actually building it, and then getting this really nice product uh, from the first idea you had, and just that evolution of the whole idea. It's just a lot of fun. But anyways, this is just kind of a video of me uh, showcasing, showing my machine to you all, just explaining it a little bit, kind of telling you what's inside of it, and then just having some fun with some gameplay. So first off the bat is, this is a handmade arcade cabinet. I, I built this myself. If you're new to my channel, I've done similar projects like this in the past. I built a small, a small single player arcade cabinet. I built like uh, little fight sticks, kind of like this. Let me just grab this over here. So I've made like fight kind of sticks like this in the past, which is a lot of fun little projects. And if you can see similarities between old projects and new ones over there. So it's kind of cool right there, the evolution of that. But anyways, uh, this is actually just made out of common board. It's a little bit less than an inch thick. So this thing is solid. It's got a good weight to it. It's a bit awkward to carry, but it's still <laughs> pretty sweet. Uh, the whole thing has been lacquered, sanded. Um, all the drill holes have been countersunk, so all the screws are deep in there, covered with some wood filler. And I just sanded and stained everything. I used table saws, hand saws, uh, power drills, power sanders, sanders, so many things, so many brushes. And just a really beautiful build construction. I wanted to keep it kind of rustic and looking like the wood just because I'm, a, I'm just a huge fan of, of nature and wood and I just kind of wanted to mix that with my love for video games. Anyways, uh, I'm a huge fan as well of the Suzo Hap buttons. Uh, this is a two player build right here. I got uh, one player is blue, the other player is red. And I'm just a huge fan of the Suzo Hap buttons. Just the click and the tactile feel and the joysticks. I'm just a super fan of them, so I wanted to use them again. They might be a little bit more expensive so, than some of the other buttons, but I totally think it's worth it. I have a, a, another USB kind of uh, external ports right here. And the point of that is uh, if you need to charge something, but really it's for if you have more players over or something, you can plug something else into it. You can plug in something like this or you can plug in the kind of like a generic a USB controller and you can join along if you want to play like a four player game or something like that. So I always like to include this. Um, again, this is a two player design. Got the red and the blue. Huge fan of it. I just love the joysticks. I love the clicking sound, the tactile feel, which is great. Uh, the monitor that I'm using for this, it's a 27 inch uh, Philips monitor. It does have speakers built in, but I decided to go the route and actually put in a speaker system in the back. So it's actually not using the speakers that came with it. It is a 1080p monitor. I wanted to get a really nice monitor. I want to get a new one as well. Pretty much the hardest part of this build for finding something was finding the monitor. I needed to find a monitor, well I wanted to find a monitor with buttons on the front of it that were exposed. So if I ever needed to turn it on or off or mess with any of the settings, I could access this when I'm looking at it instead of having to turn it off or turn it around and access buttons on the back of it. A lot of new monitors for whatever reasons have like butts on the top and buttons on the top or on the side or on the bottom, not really exposed on the face of it. So it's kind of hard to find that. It was really the hardest thing to find. Uh, other than that, I got like a player one button, a player two button, like start select, and then just eight buttons. I know you can get away with like six buttons on an arcade, but I want to have all eight just in case I want to have different emulators and stuff on it that require uh, more buttons. This green button right here is like the modifier and it helps kind of like eject a uh, game so you can get back to the main menu. Uh, some of the systems on here that I have for this emulator, uh, and there is a Raspberry Pi inside of here. I'll be explaining that kind of when I open up the back and show you inside there as well. I have MAME here, multiple arcade machine emulator. I got the Sega Mega Drive. I have Nintendo Entertainment System. This is the RetroPie menu uh, if you need to go in and kind of change anything on the system itself. Uh, I got the Super Nintendo Entertainment System and the Game Boy Color. So just a lot of fun classic systems right there. And it's just a really cool format and way to play it. And it's cool that it's a two-player machine. I always wanted to make a two-player machine. Pretty much everyone that I've played it with or tested it with seems to really like it. And I'm, I'm super happy. I want it to be a nice width apart so when you're standing it's not too claustrophobic. And I decided that a 27-inch monitor was the perfect one for that. So I pretty much built this whole build 
around this monitor. I figured out the kind of dimensions of the monitor I wanted, how far I wanted everyone to stand apart, and then it just started coming together. Uh, the next thing is, I'll flip it around, we'll open up the back, we'll check it out, and uh, maybe we'll have some fun and have some games played. All right, so this is the back of my arcade machine or the arcade cabinet. I've been calling it the machine lately. It has a nice little flat hinge in it. I use a similar hinge for my smaller arcade cabinet. It kind of like folds away, so it just doesn't get in the way of the wall or anything. So you can pretty much have it flat up against the wall. There's a little bit of the cord extruding there. Some really strong hinges right here and a nice little power toggle switch. I wanted to have that there. Uh, the next thing is let's open this up and check out the insides. All right, so this is inside my arcade cabinet. One of the first things you're probably gonna notice is the monitors right here. Like I mentioned, I pretty much built the whole frame around the monitor, and once I had the dimensions perfectly built out, I actually put the monitor in there, and I actually put these pieces of wood, I have a piece of wood right here in the center of it, up along the bottom, and there's kind of a lip along the top right here, so this monitor is actually sort of pinched in there with the wood, and there's actually a little bit of foam kind of pushing it up on the back of it. So this monitor is super secure on here and it's literally never gonna come out unless you want it to. So I'm really happy with the way that went in. Uh, the other thing you'll probably notice is I have two little satellite speakers right here and a little speaker uh, subwoofer right here. Uh, the monitor did have speakers on it, but I wanted something a little bit better, sounding a little bit better, more boom, a little bit more bass. So I ended up going with like a, uh, a Logitech speaker system. It is the Z, what does this say? The Z313 speaker system, uh, super happy with it. It's got a nice little subwoofer here, completely kind of bolted to the actual box, so this thing isn't going anywhere. The satellites or the tweeters are literally affixed to the wall right here. They're pretty much, they're not going anywhere. Got some foam padding just helping cushion it. I do have two holes drilled in this side of the box itself, one to let the sound out and one to let some air inside of it. So that's pretty much the sound system set up right there. The next thing is, if we kind of zoom down a little bit, let's check this out over here. You can see a little bit of a light back there. I have two, I guess two of those. That is one of the USB encoders. I have two in the, in the system, and those hook up the buttons, and it takes the button inputs and sends it to the Raspberry Pi. So it kind of lets you know when you're pushing a button in the front. So they have a light. I have one there and one on the other side. Over here in the center, I have a Raspberry Pi right here. It is the Model 4B. It's got four gigabytes of RAM. It's got a really nice aluminum case. You got the fan going. I don't know if you can hear it. It's got the power in. Let's just see. It's got the power in. It's got like uh, the audio and video out. And uh, I'm actually taking the audio from the monitor. Uh, it's got a uh, flash drive that's holding all of the ROMs. It has a USB dongle that I use for the wireless keyboard, which I'll get to in a minute. And then it has like a USB plug that goes to like a USB docking port that uh, I connect all of the USB extenders in the front and also the USB encoders to, so it feeds all the information to the Raspberry Pi. Super awesome little computers right there. And the cool thing about this system is if one day I want to upgrade the system, I don't have to really tear it out. I literally just take the Raspberry Pi, pull it out, I just swap over the flash drive, swap over the USB drives, and literally just uh, plug in the power and the video out to the monitor, and it's just an instant upgrade, which is pretty cool, so I'm happy about that. Over here, Velcro to the, with the side again is the USB, if it can focus, is a USB kind of docking port. And again, like I said, it has all of the inputs from the USB encoders, both of the players, and also the front USB ports getting fed to it. Just push it down. Everything is Velcroed in there with some nice Velcro tape. I'm a huge fan of it. And it's just really great because it's, it's permanent in there, but if you need to take it out, you can easily take it out. And then I mentioned earlier that I had a little USB keyboard that I have hooked up to the Raspberry Pi. I just have that Velcroed to the kind of back wall right here if I ever need to access it for anything that I need more than just the joystick and buttons for. I have a full keyboard and mouse right here. Super easy. It's already plugged in the Raspberry Pi. Just turn it on. Power's on. Got the little mouse here. Clickers. And then a full keyboard, which is super nice. Really super helpful to have. I think this is like called like a re mini or something like that. I believe the brand is like re. Really like it. Super cool. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is uh, for the audio adjustment. The audio adjustment for the speaker system. One reason I got this speaker system is because it had this kind of cool external kind of audio device. Instead of having to adjust it on like the satellite which you're used to, it has like this little external thing here. It's got the power on and off. So off on, and you got the volume up and down here, so if I ever need to adjust it, super easy to adjust it, and I obviously just velcro that to the wall as well. Uh, the other thing is, I'll just check out the other side, and then uh, we're going to turn around and have a little fun with some gameplay. 
All right, so like I mentioned, there's another light over there. That's for the second USB encoder for one of the players. Down here as well, it's a small little power brick. It's got the Velcro on the bottom of it, so I can remove it, but it's just, I don't really want to remove it right now. And it's just feeding power to the monitor, the Raspberry Pi, and the speaker system. It's cool about the power brick is it does have little USB powers. If I need to power anything else with the USB, if I want to add lights or anything else later on, it's right there to power it, so it's kind of cool. You can see I drilled an air hole as well for the subwoofer. The subwoofer is secured to the base. This wood is just super solid. I'm just uh, super happy with the build of it. And again, you can see the two holes I drilled for the side of the other speakers. Uh, super awesome build. I'm just really happy with it. Um, honestly, a lot of work. Everything is stained and lacquered inside and out. Just a really nice finish. And another thing I want to point out is uh, the magnetic closing for the actual door. So it kind of latches. Just a magnet. Super easy, super simple. And yeah, absolutely love it. Next thing, let's flip it around and have some fun. All right, let's go ahead and play some games. Pokemon Blue lined up, one of my favorite games from when I was younger on the Game Boy. And it's just a really cool format and way to play old games. It's, it's a cool format, and I really like the design of it and the build of it. Uh, right there, you see the two kind of USB emulated controllers kind of showing up right there. And since this is Game Boy Color, um, the color's a little bit strange. It's just kind of what it is. Got the Pokemon Blue version. New game, got the speakers going. Got Professor uh, Oak right there. So obviously this is just uh, an example of the Pokemon. I probably should have picked a game that I could pretty much jump into right away. I can't tell you how many times I've actually beat this game when I was a younger kid. And actually doing that Mew glitch and catching Masingo and all that. So much fun. My rival. <laughs> Always funny when you pick their names. I thought it was cool. You pick their names and their names follow with them in the story. Yeah, I wonder how many batteries I went through on the, the Game Boy Color too. But yeah, just like a really fun way to play. What is he playing his NES? He's playing his SNES. But yeah, it's just a, just a cool way to play some Game Boy games. And the way that you eject a game or find a different one is uh, the start button, hit the green button, and it kind of ejects you back. Sega. Used to play this all the time on uh, the Genesis. It's obviously on Sonic. Just a great game. Tails, no! <laughs> I saw him disappear in the back. <laughs> Always about getting them coins. Get it! Alright, we'll get past this first level. And then we'll check out another system. Woo! These were just such great platformers. They did such a great job on them. And even the music was so catchy. Got it. So cool, so much fun. All right, let's check out something else. It's fun to just play it on different format. Like I have the NES and I could play this on that, but it's just fun to play it in this type of format. I don't think Duck Hunt would really work. I don't know how to get a light gun to work. I guess I could buy a USB light gun. Hopefully this get past the first level. Let's just go a little bit. Fireballs. No! The trick is when you uh, run, you have to hit hold the jump button and you go faster. Or not the jump button. Yes, the B button. Well, there you go. Beat the first level of Mario. Such a great game. So much fun. Thanks for stopping by. Let me know if you have any questions about the arcade machine or anything like that. I'm really curious about your opinion about it. So let me know in the comments about anything you think about it. 
and just want to say thanks for stopping by again. Hope you're all doing wonderful. Hope you're all staying safe and healthy out there. I'll catch you on the next one. And don't forget, play some games with your loved ones.